Let's get throwing and let's add a custom throwable projectile entity to our Minecraft mod. More in-depth topics for Minecraft modding available in the 121 modding courses linked below, covering writable and tameable entities, custom entity armor, and even custom entity inventories, among many more awesome topics. All right, we'll find some back and tell you once more. And in this tutorial, we're gonna be adding a custom throwable projectile entity. Yes, it sounds pretty crazy, but the idea is as follows. We're going to have a custom item that we're going to add and then we're going to be able to throw that item, which is going to spawn a custom entity. And that is then going to, well, hurt the entities that it hits and things like that. Now, in our case, what we're going to add is going to be the Tomahawk, which is going to be absolutely freaking fantastic. But first things first over here, credit where credit is due. If you want to use the Tomahawk, the block bench file and all of this is going to be available in the description below for download. So all of the, you know, different, of course, all of the code is available anyway, but also the block bench files are for download. Now, when you use this, this is done by Artkeck and the distribution license over here is under the Creative Commons license. So do check the, the license as well. If you want to also publish this in your own mod, then you will need to follow the license. If you just use this personally on your own computer and you're never going to publish the mod, then you should basically be good to go. But just keep that in mind that that is a thing. Now we're going to have two different block bench files, the Tomahawk and the Tomahawk item, because the item is going to be, well, the item model over here, right? So a three-dimensional item model and the actual Tomahawk here is the actual entity. So first of all, starting with basically the entity, we're going to export a couple of things that we're going to need. So with the entity, we're going to, want to go to file project and we want to make sure that our export version is set to forge 1.17 plus mode maps. I'm going to confirm and then go to file export, export Java entity. It's going to be the tomahawk.java. I think that that's going to be okay. So we're going to save that. And that is actually what we need here. Then we also need the texture. So simply right click, save as. This is the Tomahawk PNG. That's going to be exactly right. And that is all that we need from this block bench file. From the item file, well, we need the item model JSON file to export as well as the texture here too. So we want to go to file, export block, export block item model. This is going to be the Tomahawk item.json. We're going to rename this when we actually import this into IntelliJ as well. Same thing with the texture. Right now it's called Tomahawk item PNG. We're going to right click, save as. And this is going to be the tomahawk-item.png. The textures are just a little bit different, so do keep that in mind. And once we basically import them into IntelliJ, we can change their names. Now we're going to start with the item, because that's just simply where we're going to start. It's going to be sort of a loop-de-loop -loop around anyway, because we're going to have to revisit any class as well, so we're going to be fine. So in the item custom package, we're going to right-click new Java class called the Tomahawk item in this case. Of course, we wanted to write this a little bit correctly over here. And that is, of course, Tomahawk item, item written with uppercase. This will simply extend from the item class, net world item. Hover over this to create a constructor matching super. And then we want to overwrite a single method. Now I'm going to copy this over as per usual. All of the code is available to you down below. And the error here is basically expected because we have not added the Tomahawk projectile entity class yet. We're going to add this in a second, but the idea is that this is basically on right click. So use method, of course, is the method that gets called when you right click with an item of this particular type. And then we're going to play the th snowball throw sound and we're then going to spawn a th Tomahawk projectile entity. If you want some well interesting information here, just press shift twice. And let's, for example, look at the snowball item over here, include non-project items. And you will find that, well, this is pretty much the exact same method. Now, it's just formatted a little bit differently. But you can basically see snowball, snowball. If it's not client side, then shoot from rotation, shoot from rotation. Oh, would you look at that? That is exactly what happens here. So once again, it shows you that if you know some Java and you want to look into vanilla, then you will basically find out almost how everything works. So there you go. With the item class done, we can register the item as well. And let's see, this is of course in our mod items class, a public static final registry object of type item. And it's going to be our Tama hawk over here equal to items.register tomahawk for the name and then this is going to be a supplier of a new tomahawk item that we've just added with just new item properties and here i want this to stack to 16 because i do think that that's you know sort of a good baseline for the tomahawk i think 16 of them in a stack is going to be okay let's add it to the creative mode tab because that that's just going to make our lives just a bit easier and then while we're here let's just go down and actually add all of the different uh, assets over here that we need for both the item as well as the entity. 
starting with the translation of course the item translation fairly straightforward and then the we can also do a translation here for the entity although we don't really need it but you know why once again that's like that's totally fine over those simply add it then the item model json file this is the first thing that we have actually exported so this is the tomahawk item.json i'm going to copy this over and we're going to rename this to tomahawk.json so that it basically the name over here matches the exact same name that we have right here should be fairly self-explanatory and that is going to then point to a different texture that's very important that we don't forget this so in the texture right here we want to change this to basically be tutorial mod colon item slash tomahawk there we go and that should basically be fine and you can see that that is basically then going to use the proper texture which we're also going to add under textures item and this is of course going to be the tomahawk dash item texture so once again this one right here that we're going to rename to tomahawk.png and then similarly in textures entity we're going to make a new folder called tomahawk and there we do we put in the tomahawk png that we've also exported so the last thing that we basically have not used yet is the tomahawk.java file exported from blockbench all of the rest of the files that we've just added over here were all exported from blockbench and with that done the assets are basically finished and we can proceed to actually add the proper entity itself so that is going to happen of course in entity custom so this is going to be in entity custom we're going to right click new java class called the tomahawk projectile entity there we go this is going to extend from the abstract arrow class the reason for this gets apparent in just a second let's hover over this to implement the methods and then we're going to hover over this again quick constructor matching super we're just going to choose the first one because we'll need to add a custom one in a second anyway and here we basically are going to have a couple of things so i'm going to copy over quite a few things in this case and we're going to also make this public over here and uh, then i will explain so first of all we're going to have two fields i'm going to explain them as they come up they will come up in just a second and then the next thing is the second constructor now this is a constructor with a living entity and a level over here and then the super call obviously is going to have the mod entities tomahawk which we haven't registered yet so it's going to appear as an error but of course we're going to add this in a second then passing in the shooter passing in the level then a new item stack of the tomahawk item and then fire from weapon is null because well in this case this isn't fire from a weapon this is literally just you know it's basically just spawned you just right click and then it spawns the default pickup item is going to be a new item stack of mod items.tomahawk.get so basically making sure that whatever item we pick up is going to be the tomahawk and then we'll add the last four methods that we have by like i said all available in the description down below and i'll then explain from top to bottom the first one here is the rendering rotation which will also explain the rotation float over here idea is that every time this particular method gets called the rotation increases and the idea here then is that this is going to facilitate the way of the rotation actually working within the renderer now when it comes to the rotation there's probably multiple different ways that you could theoretically do this you could also have the tomahawk projectile entity itself rotate but we're just going to have the visuals rotate once again you could you know you could do any of those things if you so choose to i decided to do it like this there are definitely i mean there's a lot of ways right like the like uh, all roads lead to rome sort of thing so keep that in mind that there's d many different ways and we'll see this in a second and then is grounded we need this to make the in ground variable over here the field to actually expose this to the outside so they have the, a public boolean over here is grounded on hit entity should kind of be sort of self-explanatory where well this is called when you when this particular entity hits another entity and that will basically then hurt the entity that we just hit for four damage and then it's also going to discard this like the projectile itself so that it basically disappears and then lastly and this is for where the grounded offset comes in that is the on hit block method when we hit a block the idea is that i want the tomahawk itself to be embedded inside of that block so if we were to have a block right here right and it looks maybe kind of like this right so this is this would be the block here just for the sake of argument right then obviously the tomahawk itself would fly here and it would rotate like this right and then i would want this to be sort of something like this stuck inside of the actual block however if the block all of a sudden is here right and would fly this way then obviously i don't want this to be stuck inside of the block like this that would look a little bit weird so we have to you know rotate around 
and things like that, right? Rotate around and rotate it around like this and move it around so that it like properly fits inside of the block. That's the idea. And that is what the grounded offset does. So hopefully that makes sense. And like I said, those numbers are just sort of basically trial and error, more or less. And there you go. Once again, there are probably better ways to do this. And also there is probably going to be like different ways to do it because um, there's some amount of snapping here. So sometimes when you throw it from a different direction, then it's going to look like it snaps into a weird position. But that's just, I'm okay with it. If you're not, you can, of course, always play around with this once everything is implemented. Now, with this done, we have this done. We can go to the mod entities class and actually register our custom entity. And this is going to also illuminate one issue that you might have run into when trying to add one of these different uh, like entities. So register object of in, of type entity type of type tomahawk projectile entity can be the tomahawk equal to entity types that register tomahawk of course with a supplier of a of entity type dot builder so entity type dot builder dot of then passing in tomahawk projectile entity colon colon new second parameter is going to be a mob category of miscellaneous and then after the first closing parenthesis, we're going to have a size of 0.5f and a 1.15f. Yes, and then a dot build after the first closing parenthesis again, tomahawk, and there we go. You will find that there is an error right here, and that is that it cannot resolve the constructor. Now, what we want to do here is some Java magic, okay? After the builder, dot. So after the dot and right in front of the off, right? Right in front of the O. We want to put in curly, or rather not curly brackets, but angle brackets, and then pass in Tomahawk projectile entity, and all of a sudden, it works. This, to me, is pretty crazy. I am not quite sure why this works. Like I said, I mean, it it basically points to a specific, uh, one of the specific constructors that we have, because obviously we have two different constructors over here, and it should point to this one. I just don't know why, you know, why we need to do this syntax, but it is what it is. If that works, then I'm okay with it, and there we go. With this done, we can close the mod entities class because it was registered. We have this one added over here, so there are no more errors in the projectile entity class itself. So this one is also done. And then here, we can simply import the Tomahawk projectile entity, and the Tomahawk item can also be closed. And now, there is only the model and the renderer left. And those, luckily, are also quite easy and, I mean, more or less straightforward. So let's go in the entity package, in the client package. I'm going to right-click new Java class, put the Tomahawk projectile model and then we also have the tomahawk projectile renderer there we go i'm going to start with the model as this is the last thing that we have to still copy over from what we've exported from blockbench and once again i'm going to copy over all of the contents within the curly brackets over here and then just pass this in or paste this in and then we're going to just import every single class that we need for now and then we're going to fix all of the errors so like I said, as per usual, click on this Alt and Enter, and then it's going to import the different things. Then at the top over here, we're going to change the name of the constructor, of course. Then this will extend from entity model of type Tomahawk projectile entity. And the part position or part pause we also need to import. And then in the setup anim method, this is going to be the Tomahawk projectile entity. In the render to buffer method, simply get the post stack and the vertex consumer. And then in the float over here, I'm going to basically get all of those floats and replace them with an integer called color and then passing in that color and all of a sudden the entire class is done. Here in the new resource location, this of course turns into resource location from namespace and path where we first of all do tutorial mode .mod ID with a path tomahawk and the layer main is totally fine and that one, that, that's it. That's all we need to do. The model class itself, super freaking easy. We don't need any animations. We don't need any root or anything like that. That is it. And then the renderer is going to be similarly straightforward, all things considered. That one is going to extend from the entity renderer class of type Tomahawk projectile entity. We'll hover over this to create, to first of all, implement the get texture location method. Hover over this again, create constructor matching super. And we're going to make this public over here. And then we actually need the model itself. So we need to sort of manually basically render the model. So this is a projectile, a Tomahawk projectile model. I'm going to call this model. And then in the constructor, we're going to say this dot model is equal to a new Tomahawk projectile model passing in p context dot bake layer. And this is then per Tomahawk projectile model dot layer location. And with that, we have it. 
The texture location, I don't really think I need to uh, explain anything there. It's literally just a resource location that points to the texture that we have literally, you know, like added over, I don't know, like nine minutes ago or something like that. So uh, that we've copied over. So I don't think that that's, that needs any explanation. The render method, however, well, that one I can understand. I mean, look at it, right? So the idea here is that the rendering obviously happens from the model. So we're going to render the model over here and there are some post stack basically changes. So basically the changes over here that we're doing in, th in the if statement over here are changes that happen to the model before it is rendered. And what happens here is that, well, we're going to say that if the entity is not grounded, so in this case it is, it is flying, then what we're going to do is we're going to rotate it positively around the X axis and with the rendering rotation. So every time this method gets called, it's going to increase and therefore, what's going to happen is that the actual rotation itself, right? So the rotation of this is going to change every, well, every time it renders, which is every tick. And therefore, it's going to look like it is rotating like this, which is going to be really freaking awesome. And then once it is grounded, you can see it uses the grounded offset over here, which is determined on what, like what direction of a block it was like it hit. And then that one's going to stay exactly like this. And like I said, this is one of the ways that I found this to work. And this was pretty pretty neat and pretty awesome. You can once again also double check, you know, different ways to do it. You can in theory do it via the entity itself, right? That also works so that the entity itself actually rotates instead of just making it so that the the model, it's like the model or the rendering rotates, right? So because this one is should just be the visual, while when you rotate the projectile itself, then it would also rotate the, uh, the bounding box, I'm pretty sure. But regardless, you know, once again, uh, many leads, uh, many roads lead to Rome in this instance. So highly recommended to Im implement it like this. And then once you have it and it works, you can of course rewrite it. I actually encourage it as well. Uh, highly recommended. And with that, of course, all of the code is also available down below. We have the renderer. We have this. We now just need to connect it all. And the first step for this is in the mod event bus events. The layer location right here is going to be for the projectile Tomahawk projectile model, and then here, projectile model create body layer. Awesome. That is all we need here. And then in the, we don't need a attributes or placements because a because this is a non-living entity and those basically don't need any, uh, you know, non-living entities don't need uh, attributes over or placements. And then in the tutorial mode class at the very bottom over here, entity render us, we're going to also do the Tomahawk right here. And then this is going to be the Tomahawk renderer, quote unquote new. And with this, we should have everything that we're going to need. Now, obviously, it's not like super like straightforward, right? That you can just add this in like five minutes. But when you actually look at each of the different classes, you know, the entity class, okay, but it's definitely not as crazy as let's say the Triceratops entity class, where there's definitely a few more moving things and moving parts over here. So yeah, highly recommended as per usual, right? Look into the abstract arrow class, look at some other like vanilla classes. Always, always, always highly recommended to check for vanilla for any different references that can always basically only help you. With that, though, let's jump into the game and see if it works. All right, fans, we're back in Minecraft. As you can see, the Tomog has been successfully added to the game. And if I throw it, you can see it gets thrown. I mean, that looks pretty freaking sick. And you can see if it hits a block, it's going to stick in that block. And it, I mean, th that looks pretty freaking cool, right? Like, you can see that it basically changes the orientation and sometimes it, it does look a little bit weird, especially if you do top or bottom. So you can see this way, it basically snaps in sort of a very unrealistic way. And also if you throw it up, it's going to look a little bit weird, like straight up and straight down. However, once again, this is like really freaking cool already, right? And if you, of course, hit an entity, well, you can <laughs> you can get those pretty freaking neatly. Whoa, this guy is going crazy. This guy's zooming out here. Look at that. But yeah, that's the whole idea, and that is a custom throwable projectile entity added to Minecraft. Awesome. As per usual, all of the code is available down below and everything you need as well. But that's going to be it for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, I'll add a custom boss bar to our entity. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.